An alternative heat treatment to fight cancer is now available, but how does it compare to traditional method? All these topics next on Today's Health. Of all the challenges facing medical science, the battle against cancer is one of the most complex and baffling. Although more people are surviving some cancers today, the disease is still claiming far too many lives, and the survival rates for many tumors are still low. New therapies are being tested to help improve survival rates. Breast cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, there are many different types of cancers. And according to the Centers for Disease Control, they add up to the second leading cause of death in the United States. In most cases, cancer begins with the growth of a malignant tumor. It usually starts to form in one local area, but then can spread or metastasize into other organs and glands throughout the body. The key to surviving cancer is to either eliminate the tumor or stop the growth of that malignant tissue before it can spread. When you're given the news that you have cancer, it's, it's a feeling that no one can know unless you've been there. It feels like you've been kicked in the stomach. Surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation have been the most effective weapons to date in battling cancer. But another alternative, called hyperthermia, can also help improve survivability on its own, as well as help increase the effectiveness of other treatments. Hyper means above, thermia means temperature. Uh, so what you're doing is you're raising the normal body temperature of 37 degrees centigrade to enhance the effect of radiation primarily, but we use it a lot with chemotherapy too. After I was diagnosed and I uh, was sent to my surgeon, he uh, thought that I was a prime candidate to try the pre-op treatment, which involved the chemotherapy and the radiation. And he sent me to Dr. Stroop. And Dr. Stroop is uh, the doctor that introduced me to hyperthermia. What I want to advocate or talk to you about today is the use of a new kind of treatment called hyperthermia. After he explained it to me, and he showed me the machine and told me exactly what was gonna happen. Um, I decided that I needed all the help I could get, so to speak. Hypothermia trials consistently across the board are showing a 20 to 30% improvement on the type of results we had before. And that is such a big improvement. We know for sure that uh, if you add hyperthermia to radiation to patients with cervix cancer, that you get better results in terms of uh, the, the tumor um, disappears and patients have a better chance to get cured. For example, head and neck cancers, they can be very well treated with hyperthermia, breast cancers, some pelvic cancers like prostate cancer and gynecologic cancers, these are the sites that can be treated very well with hyperthermia. When it comes to cancer, any treatment that impairs tumor growth or helps existing therapies work more effectively gives us another reason to have hope. The struggle against cancer requires our best and brightest innovations. Hypothermia is another powerful treatment that gives us one more weapon against the second leading cause of death in America. This promising therapy uses focused heat and the result may be widespread hope. The power of hypothermia is that it, it has a high potential to increase the effect of current conventional techniques such as radiotherapy or chemotherapy. And besides enhancing the effect, it has no toxicity. So it does not harm you as a patient. Hyperthermia is a process of focusing enough heat on a tumor to either kill it or damage it severely. But how much heat is needed to do this? And how can it be localized so that it doesn't damage other parts of the body? When you treat a cancer patient using hyperthermia, you must be able to focus the radio frequency or microwave generated heat into a very specific region. You take a uh, look at the body in sections in, in like we do with CT scans or MRI scans and you can study three-dimensionally the tumor in, in the normal tissue. 
And then you do planning, you do mock computerized setups of heating and look at heating patterns in those patients. And that gives you an ability to plan your heating, deposit and steer that heating exactly where you want it. The treatment of cancer using hyperthermia relies on advanced equipment like the BSG-2000 developed by BSG Medical Corporation. The VSG-2000 can precisely deliver heat treatments into the malignant region without harming healthy tissues. The treatment lasted about six weeks, five to six weeks, coupled with radiation and chemotherapy. And they all three ended at the same time. And then I had to wait a couple of weeks after that, and I was re-examined to determine if the tumor had shrunk, and it had. Then I waited uh, about a couple of months and was re-examined and um, they could not find the tumor. It is not an expensive treatment to, to use compared to some of the types of chemotherapy or surgery and irradiation. And most importantly, it actually produces excellent benefits to the patient. I think for anyone battling cancer, uh, new treatments offer a lot of hope. And I tried hyperthermia, and I think anyone else should, because it really worked. The last checkup that I had with my oncologist, he said, I hate to use the word cured with a cancer patient, but with you, I will use that word.